Welcome to 15 Minutes with Longevity. I'm Giselle Wertheim Ames and I'll be your host. Today my guest host is Dr. Celie Gooley. She's the founder and director of MediSpace Wellness Clinic. And on the show today we'll also be speaking to Doreen Cabral. He's the director of Wellness in Motion as well as Melissa Kelly, a registered dietitian and founder of Scoop to Lose. With the holiday season around the corner, we're going to be looking at ways to stay fit and eat healthy no matter where you are. So we know that when the Christmas season comes, holidays, we all kind of let it go a little bit and we pick up weight. But how much weight do we, like, is this really true? And how much weight do we pick up? Of course it's true, Giselle. We are all so, I wouldn't say weak. I think the temptation just gets the better of us. So much stuff is around to enjoy and we want to celebrate. So part of celebration, mm -hmm. people get tempted. And in general, people will pick up between two and a half kilos to up to six kilograms six in kilograms. a five week festive season. So that's, it's quite scary sometimes. That's pretty hectic. Melissa, you're the dietitian. <laughs> Why? I mean, always we let go, but I mean, really, surely this is the time when actually we have more time to be circumspect about what we're eating. Because don't we use the excuse during the year, we're busy, we're stressed, we don't have time to eat properly? Absolutely, Shazal. I think that's the ideal time to actually get back in a better shape than what you left because now you have time available. You can actually prepare nice, um, healthy, cooked meals. Um, but people just have, I think it's important to have the mindset right before you go on holiday that um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it around to my advantage. I mean, it's quite interesting because, I mean, I know people who will say, well, if I just go on diet before, because, mm. of course, you also want to have, mm. the, you know, you want to have a body, and you're not going to put your swimsuit Summer on, body. or you've got to, you know, you've got to be <laughs> active somewhere in the hiking shorts, or, or even if you're just staying at home. I mean, now we're at home, and we are brying, and we're visible. Mm. All of a sudden, that whole thing now changes. So we have this amazing thing that happens, and we all kind of go on these diets I think there's this diet mania that happens and then and then we've lost it but into December something happens and I is that Dora I'm gonna ask you I mean is that yes. really the again the right why are we doing this why well, can't I'm just we smiling because Melissa's behavior? right I mean people need to mm. definitely travel lighter and I can mm. see what you're saying by that when you go and you and you take on a holiday first of all you know we discussed it earlier that it would be great to choose a holiday that is that you're going to be active on holiday. That's the first choice. So if you're going to go on a skiing trip or if you're going to go into the mountains, mountain biking, that type of thing, choose a, a, a discipline that or a holiday destination that runs these type of things. There's certain resorts that get the whole family involved in exercise. There's great programs that run. Um, you know, we, we, we said we want to discuss the couch potatoes. It's a very important part. You know, I recommended that they should go on safari. You know, we discussed it. There's a reason for that is because you put them in a, in a, you know, onto a game drive or walking in a bush where there's a big five and uh, if something chases them, they're sure to run. That's a good way to use weight. And, uh, I'm not sure that's on that. And, and, it comes, <laughs> and it comes highly recommended. No, I'm only joking. So the point is, I think that when you get to the serious side of it, you don't want to let go of everything that you've, that you've been doing throughout the year. Health doesn't go on hold. Your blood pressure, your cholesterol, whatever it is, doesn't just mm. all of a sudden stop during December and then you take it up in, in uh, January. And in fact, you know, on that point, and Dr. Gulli, you'll bear me out here, I've read sure. the statistic that in fact they have see a peak, hospitals see a peak of people having cardiac arrest over the festive season, which I think is a very, very scary statistic. I mean, is that the last thing mm. you actually want to happen? Well, the reality really is exactly as Darin is saying, one of the key things that people miss is that I can be unfit the whole year. And once I'm trying, when you're on holiday as well, there's also a bit of a competitiveness that starts going. You want to have the hot bod and show the fitness um, instead of vegetating and, and being a couch potato. And some people completely misalign with their physique with their health. And you can have pulmonary embolisms, you can have a whole lot of um, cholesterol clots shooting mm. off um, unguarded. Why? Because the second reason that people don't do before they go on holiday is to make sure that they are healthy and they've actually screened and yeah. know what their risk status is. So a lot of people are walking around not knowing that they've got high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes. Go on these great adventurous um, holidays, bungee jump, etc. And when you put your body under that kind of trauma or acceleration force, you can really trigger an adverse event mm -hmm. and it can be fatal. Well, there's two things, Giselle, that, and I agree with that, mm. is that you think about somebody leading up to the holiday season. They've got, there's two um, schools of thought. 
they're either thinking about relaxing, relaxation mm. completely, mm. because they've had such so a stressful tough, year. Yeah. yeah. Or they come out of it and say, I haven't had an opportunity to exercise. Now it's my opportunity to exercise and I'm going to go for it. So what they do, they're not prepared for the exercise that mm. they actually take on. Mm. So a guy that normally hasn't run 100 meters for the last six months gets onto the beach, he sees the end of the rocks and he goes, hold on, I'll just run to those rocks today, which is six k's away. Mm. He hasn't done that. He ends up having a heart attack on the beach. It's That's happened. It. Okay, so these are things that people need to speak about. Your preparation is very, very important. So when you look at your holiday destination and what you're going to do, plan it. It's also going to help you to be committed to doing your exercise. So if you usually train on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, stick to training on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You might want to change the time, but commit to a time. So if you're going to get it out the way before you actually get onto the beach and start relaxing, mm -hmm. then go and exercise. Get onto the beach at 7 in the morning, if that's what is a lovely walk, and turn it into a run and a few exercises, push-ups, nice functional body weight exercises. But have it planned and commit to it. There's not many people that have got a strong enough mind to say that when they're on holiday, I'll just train when and how I feel like it. It doesn't work like that. Commit to the times and you'll see that you'll be a lot more successful during your holiday time in order to, to uh, do your workouts and not fall behind coming into the mm. new year. Obviously, it's not only a question. I mean, we kind of joke about the exercise and, you know, being active in that. But there's so much temptation over the festive season. There are all these Christmas goodies that we mm. have to eat and everything all looks so wonderful and of course now we have the time which we don't have during the year to actually spend more time in the supermarket staring at all these things and buying them. <laughs> I, mean, I think I mean I know <laughs> I buy far much more food over the Christmas period than probably I do for the preceding no, three months. I think we all, it's you know it's really the season to be jolly so again Mr. how how do we help ourselves with that are there any hints and tips around that behavior? Yeah, sure. I, I, I totally agree. You have all these temptations. And um, I personally don't believe in diluting your wine to bring down the kilojoules and diluting your, your fruit juice. You know, I think have it the way you enjoy it. Have your glass of wine, have your fruit juice, have whatever your cake. I personally love the French mentality. I mean, they have their creme brulee, not in a low fat option, but they have a small portion. So I think the key is here. Eat what you enjoy, absolutely allow yourself that, but just be focused on the portions. See, you know what you can have in three bites, have the same taste explosion than in polishing it. Don't have that mentality of, you know, overdoing everything. So, and if you go in with that mentality, you can actually enjoy because you, you are more active. So you can enjoy more of the foods and, and, and abs uh, absorb more calories or kilojoules so go for it and um, enjoy just watch the portions but Melissa people will argue that you're killing the fun the whole point of being on holiday is that I want to let go let loose what mm -hmm. impact does this overindulgence actually have on on the body's ability to recover because we we vibrate from okay I'm going to indulge and have a good time and not think about New Year's resolutions in January the minute the first happens, now all of a sudden I'm going on a crash diet. What's the impact of that kind of thinking? Because I think people miss that point um, when they go into this indul these indulgence spells. What does it do to the body to really indulge in bad food or saturated food? Yes, I think uh, as, you, as you exactly mentioned, it's, it's, it's the whole mentality. It's never constructive to have that mentality, not even throughout the year. Because the typical thing with the overloading and then dieting leads into the yo-yo dieting effect mm. and you know what on the long run now I'm talking really in years if that's your habit it actually leads to insulin resistance it actually leads to training your body to store fat mm. a body is not made to store fat I mean if you're on holiday and you eat enjoy what you eat you're training there's no need for you to store a lot of fat but if you really go overboard and go back on the crash diet those things teaches the cell on a cellular level to store fat and become insulin resistant. So um, it's not just for holiday season we're looking mm. at. Never have that mentality. And you said killing the fun. That's why I'm saying if you still enjoy <laughs> the foods, the creamy one, not the, you don't have to go for all the low fat and uh, fat free and, and low GI options. So do what you do. But if you reduce the portions, you can still have the fun yeah. in small amounts. I understand we drink far much more alcohol. Mm. during this time. Very good it's point. It's surely got to be another challenge. Absolutely, because the thing comes with alcohol, it's the combination of the alcohol and the food. 
um, the alcohol on its own could be metabolized, but the body metabolizes it first. So then, and then you've got a good appetite, and then you add all the snacks and biltong and crisps and whatever, and there comes the problem. Then you actually store more fat around the waist. Fat that was also difficult to lose when you get back in January. So I think, you know what, again, moderation, easier said than done. Definitely easier said than done. And um, still watching what you eat with what you drink. Um, as, as, as good as you can okay. do that. Now, Dorian, what are your tips? Let's talk about it now. We've got to help, we've got to help our, our viewers make it through Christmas and come to the New Year really healthy. Okay, well, just to go up on, on what Melissa was saying, you know, that, you know, I also believe in not killing the fun, but you, in order to eat or consume a lot of food, it means you sit around a table or you're sitting down. If you're actively mm -hmm. involved and you're at the beach and you're going for walks, you don't want to consume a lot of alcohol or food. So it's, once again, it's priorities. So my tips are, you know, number one, get your priorities right. Number two, you must plan. Definitely plan your holiday. A very, very important thing, though, is when the, I would advise viewers to definitely focus on getting your workouts done. From being in a personal training industry, people who come back in a January period that have not focused on their, on their, on their health and their fitness, and they're going to the fair diets and all those things, it's a downward spiral is it a significant difference between somebody who comes back healthy, how motivated they are going into the year, and the person's energy just slumps when they get on the scale and they're six kilograms heavier or whatever, they're That's demotivated it. immediately. So just from a psychological point mm. of view, and I'm not a psychologist, but a psychological point of view and what I've observed, that person is, it takes a lot longer to get into the flow of the year. True. That as yeah. far as, you got to, you need 12 weeks from the 1st of, first of January. Mm -hmm to get rid of all of that weight, get back in and start feeling okay. you know, you know, almost human at the end of the day. So, so we've heard it all now, we're going to plan ahead, we're going, to, we're going to have a plan, we're going to be moderate, but we're going to enjoy ourselves because that is, after all, it's the festive season. Well, that's it for this show. Thank you for joining us. I hope you'll join us again next week for another dose of health and wellness news. Goodbye.